G'day folks. Next on the agenda tonight is this Copeland Compliance Scroll. Well, Copeland Scroll. Normally called Compliance Scroll, I believe. Doesn't say what refrigerant type it uses. It's a uh, three phase, 380 or 420 volt, 50 or 60 hertz AC compressor. Maximum operating pressure 27.5 bar. Uh, was it 10 amps maximum? Normal operation. Uh, 1.36 liters of mineral oil. Most of which it puked up in the bin. But I managed to get a bit out of it just before, and it's a nice metallic grey. So I'd say it's been eating itself for the last, I don't know how many hours or days. It's not in a good way. That's why it's been replaced. I'd say it's just scrambled. The uh, circloid converters probably started disintegrating and it's just gone to hell from there. I'm going to cut it down this weld line and cut the top off it. There's a few spot welds down here but that just holds the bottom bearing mount in. The motor space is pressed in about here and the scroll compressor head is actually retained by these hydraulic press indentations. They're not welds. So the scroll compressor head's in there. They're pretty easy to break down. As long as you split that it generally opens up. You can dump the stator and the head and everything out at once. I just decided to set this thing up and see what it does when I energize it. Three phase compressor using single phase start and run gear. It's off a Mitsubishi rotary compressor. But it should be adequate enough to start it. I've also reworked my earth strap for the table. The old one broke off down the bottom. Uh, I'm using heavier cable. And the heavy earth stake down there. Always got to earth these things. I know this will be earthed when I attach the AC cable to it, but just for the hell of it, make sure that the table's earthed as well. All hooked up. I bypassed the crappy little solid state uh, contactor relay slash thing. You're supposed to have a 24 volt control signal to energize it, but I'm just going to hotwire it anyway. See what it does. not happy. Try some different starting gear. Yeah, compressor butchery at its best. <laughs> I think it's smoking. Come apart soon. Hmm. Let's compress a head right there.
go. Decapitated and gutted. That's the way I like them. Cycloid converter is still intact. Can't see, uh, can't see much of the motor. Don't know where that black residue has come from, but I think she's just a bit worn out. Okay, well, first real problem. The bottom bearing in here has gotten so hot that it's burnt the outside of this cast iron housing. It's all gone black, and it's all scored up, and actually. There's a big taper in there, and most of the bearings actually displaced and welded itself onto the motor shaft. That motor shaft is supposed to be reasonably parallel all the way down, but you can see that line there is where the bearing shell starts. It's actually welded itself on and then bored out this iron housing as the bearing itself. It's made itself a new bearing. Cycloid converter seems to be okay, but that bearing is absolutely shot. I'll try and get that rotor out and see what the bottom one's like. A good few litres of oil. Well, the lower bearing in this thing here is just fine. That's the bearing surface, and it's not scored or worn away. There's no shortage of oil in this compressor. The oil gallery down the centre is pretty big, you can see right through it. I mean, that's just how I found it. There's grinding swarf and crap from me cutting it out. But there's no obvious problems. There's an oil slinger or something there. Why it decided to bind up and destroy the top bearing, I don't know. Something's caused a blockage in that oil gallery, I'd say. Well, at this stage, the only thing I can think of that might have killed this compressor is excessive flood back or uh, liquid refrigerant coming back into the crankcase or the crankcase not being fitted with a heater and the refrigerant migrating into the oil and bubbling out as it comes up through the bearings and literally starving this one of oil. It's like a car engine. You get too many air bubbles in your oil supply, it's going to starve the bearings and burn them out. I mean, this bearing hasn't had any oil and there was no shortage of oil in the crankcase. No sign of any big blockages or problems in the oil pickup. So the only thing I, thing I can think is that this unit might not have been fitted with a big enough accumulator or something was horribly wrong that caused way too much refrigerant to come back and mix with the oil or it wasn't fitted with a crankcase heater. But I'll pull this thing apart and just see what the scroll itself is like. 